Hey guys, Greg from Faction Fab. When you look at competition level cars and trucks, one of the biggest things you notice is just how aggressive their wheels are. This is true for racing as well as off-road. Now, most of us aren't at the track every weekend, even though we may want to be. So the high cost of wider wheels and tires in the perfect offset can be a little overkill. But there may be a lucky few who do have the track capable ride with a big brake kit, and you might be trying to maximize with every millimeter of tire possible. Or maybe you just want the widest clearance to take your truck off-road. No matter where you fit in this range, Faction Fab wheel spacers can help you get there. Now since we want you to be comfortable running these no matter where you take your truck or car, we used 6061 T6 aerospace grade aluminum with a high strength to weight ratio. Then they are type 2 hard anodized in black which provides protection against oxidation and corrosion as well as keeps them looking sleek on the car with a simple laser etched logo. They're also packaged in high strength shrink wrap, so you can be sure that they'll arrive with no damage to the outside or in the holes. Now, all of our spacers are designed to be bolt on and application specific. The center bore is hub centric to the stock platform and it mimics the stock hub on top so that it sits perfectly between the hub and the wheel. This ensures that the wheel always stays true to the hub and prevents any wobbling or shaking at high speeds. The thicker spacers also come complete loaded with coated studs and lug nuts so they can be bolted on without any additional items. Now starting with the Subaru applications, we have small slip-on spacers from three millimeters all the way up to the bolt-on 25 millimeters. The wider sizes also come in bolt pattern adapters from 5x100 to 5x114 and 5x114 to 5x100 as well. We also have spacers for the Ford trucks, including all 2010 and up F-150 and the 2018 and up Ranger, and other applications including Jeep, Volkswagen, and the new A90 Supra. So wheel spaces are really pretty easy to install. We're just gonna give you a couple tips to make sure it's as seamless as possible. The first thing you wanna do if you're gonna install wheel spacers is to make sure your hub and rotor surface is clean. This is a new setup that we have here, so it's not gonna be any rust, but you'll see a lot of buildup on an older one, especially on this surface all around here and then right around the hub ring. These especially can get pretty rusty and there's lots of buildup since there's a little bit of a gap there from the road, salt, anything like that. So we're going to recommend a couple tools to make it easy for you. The first is just going to be a simple wire brush. Everyone should be able to get a hold of these fairly easily and you'll just want to make sure that you scrub all around that hub ring and all around the hub surface. If your rotor surface still has a good coating on it, then it should probably be fine. That's gonna help prevent corrosion in the future too. So don't get too aggressive on that, just enough to where there's no more rust or corrosion visible. So the next tool that we're gonna use, um, this is just a, an attachment you can use on a drill or an air powered grinder, and you can see it has a little bit of a hole right here. So that is going to fit right over the stud and then you can really clean the rotor surface and right around the stud to make sure that's clean. And this is one you're gonna see in pretty much every shop standard. Um, this is like a little scouring pad attached to an air grinder and this will just make quick work of cleaning all around that hub surface. So one thing you may want to do once it's clean is add some anti-seize lubricant. Um, this is completely optional, um, but you can do it as liberally as you feel like. You can do it on the surface of the rotor as well as the spacer, but you'll really wanna make sure you focus on the hub ring and this here, just because there are different metals that are gonna go through. So as this wears, that's gonna be one space where you might get some galvanic corrosion and that anti-seize lubricant is gonna help prevent that. So now we're ready to install the spacer. As I mentioned, this is hub centric. So this bore here is going to match that hub centric ring. And then you'll have that matching thing on the other side to replicate this for the wheel. What that means is when you get this lined up, you should have very little movement, even without any lug nuts installed. So side to side, up and down, there's really nothing here. And then once you get the lug nuts on, it's gonna be really tight. One thing we do recommend, even though we don't include it with the kit, is some blue Loctite, but just put it on the stock studs or the lug nuts. And then once you get on that, should really hold these in place, especially so you don't have to take the wheels on and off and retorque everything down. And it's always a really good idea to make sure you thread these on by hand first. Um, that way you'll make sure you don't damage any threads. When we're ready to tighten everything up, you'll wanna make sure you have a thin wall 19 millimeter socket. So when you're ready to torque everything down to final spec, you notice you don't have a wheel on the ground to stop this hub from spinning. One thing to prevent that is to have a friend sit in the driver's seat and just have them mash on the brakes and that will stop any movement here enough to get the needed torque for these inner lug nuts. 
If you're by yourself, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, one way that I like is to just take a stubby screwdriver and you stick it in the veins of the brake rotor and then when it turns, it forces this to stop spinning. If you do a stubby one, you'll make sure you have a plastic piece right here against the brake caliper so you're not going to get any chipping of the paint or any damage or anything like that. Or you could also just use something for padding like a micro microfiber cloth. Or another option is to put some old lug nuts on the wheel spacer studs and then take a long pry bar and stick it between the two studs or lug nuts. Then you'll have one hand holding the pry bar and the other hand on your torque wrench and then you'll be able to get that torque that needed there too. All right, now you'll wanna tighten all these in the star pattern, just like you do with stock wheels. And we do recommend to go back and retorque everything after 50 to 100 miles, especially on new spacers, as there is a little bit of a stretch in the metal as everything settles. Now feel free to reach out if you have any questions about your spacers, and definitely let us know if you have a size or application that you would like to see us carry. And as always, like and subscribe this video to see more Faction Fab content in your life. And we'll see you next time.